as usual, that's the game we're going to stay with. I'm getting a little tired of Carlson, no offense meant, but as long as he's on the top board, we're going to keep covering that. Should he forfeit it, we're going to have a look at someone else. And did Andrejkin play one knight to c3? I think that's what he did. And we get the four knights, bishop b5. The principal move here is knight to d4, but that's very theoretical. Not much in Magnus' style. He plays the slower bishop b4, castles, castles, d3. Now theory is to take and go d6 when the position is supposed to be roughly equal. White is the two bishops, but he has a slightly damaged pawn formation. Standard maneuver is knight e7 and knight to g6, which is indeed executed. The knight on c6 is always a bit of a problem piece. Four black in these structures, so Carlsen is quick to regroup it. And with a6, maybe he wants to go bishop e6. We've seen him use that idea before to accept these double pawns on the e-file to cut the white bishop pair in half. Let's see if he does that or if he goes for the standard knight to g6. I'm curious. He's taking a little time out here. I wouldn't be surprised if he went bishop to e6. He's trying to evaluate the consequences now. Ah, he goes b5 first, bishop b3. Could still go bishop e6 or he could grab some space with c5. I'm a little surprised by b5 because that gives white a bit of a target to go a4 or to go c4 at some point to eliminate his double pawns. But Carlsen has valued the space he gains by going b5, c5 higher than the potential targets. Bishop g5 fighting for the d5 square for the bishop. I still think black is fine now. He wants to go h6, and then if white had to exchange on f6, black would gain this very pleasant square on f4 for his knight. So bishop d5 might have been a bit of a blank shot. Now he plays a4, but after h6, you have to take, queen takes. And this kingside attack can become quite serious quite fast with the knight on f4. Then you want to follow up. You're already threatening bishop takes h3 with ideas like queen g6 check. So I think something has gone wrong for Andrejkin here, and I would put my finger on that move, bishop to d5, which sort of forced him to take on f6, which leads to a slightly unpleasant position. You would love to go g3 here, but then the pawn on h3 is dropping, so you can't do that. And else, yeah, white is already on the defensive side of things here. Knight to f4, queen to g6, black position plays itself. If you need to, you can also go for king h8 and f5. So Andrejki needs something drastic to change the course of the game, but I can't see it. d4, I think, would just be ignored. He would just play knight to f4. So things looking good for Magnus Carlsen. Not that this surprises us, because he has been doing pretty well over the last couple of days. <clears throat> On the adjacent board, we have the other co-leaders, Maxim Vashila Graf and Bartosz Sojko, slugging it out. So far, an equal position, funnily enough, also with double C. So bishop d5 might have been a bit of a blank shot. Now he plays a4, but after h6, you have to take, queen takes. And this kingside attack can become quite serious quite fast with the knight on f4. Then you want to follow up. You're already threatening. Bishop takes h3 with ideas like queen g6 check. So I think something has gone wrong for Andrejkin here. And I would put my finger on that move, bishop to d5, which sort of forced him to take on f6, which leads to a slightly unpleasant position. You would love to go g3 here, but then the pawn on h3 is dropping, so you can't do that. And else, yeah, white is already on the defensive side of things here. Knight to f4, queen to g6, black position plays itself. If you need to, you can also go for king h8 and f5. So Andrejki needs something drastic to change the course of the game, but I can't see it. D4, I think, would just be ignored. He would just play knight to f4. So things looking good for Magnus Carlsen. Not that this surprises us, because he has been doing pretty well over the last couple of days. <clears throat> On the adjacent board, we have the other co-leaders, Maxim Vashila Graf and Bartosz Sojko, slugging it out. So far, an equal position, funnily enough, also with double C pawns for white. Yeah, there we see those guys, MVL and Sojko. I'm, I'm surprised to see Sojko up there. I've known him for a long time, very nice guy, very strong, solid grandmaster from Poland. But I think I've beaten him in the occasional Blitz game, so he really should have no business up on that stage. But it looks like he's having a great tournament. 
and MVL is trying to checkmate him here with an offensive on the king side. Sochko just went d4, trying to open the center, but MVL kept it closed with the pawn to c4. Now after knight g6, I'm not sure I can see all the pieces right, but if I do, then knight to f5, intending knight to d6 looks like a pretty good idea. Yeah, it looks like Vashila Graf is better here, but I don't know, knight f5, maybe there was knight e7 bothering him. So he tries to checkmate on the h file. He's planning to go queen g4, queen f, or queen f2, queen h4, but Sojko stops that with bishop c8 when, yeah, there's no doubling of heavy pieces on the h file anytime soon. On the clock, Sojko is a little behind, but playing a pretty good tournament so far for sure, and I'm not even sure if he's worse here. The knight now comes to f5, fighting against the backup plan, white had to go h4, h5, which should be four, most likely knight to f5. Rook to f3, you could offer a move repetition here with knight to h4, just to chase that rook away from the third rank. No, doesn't feel the need to prepare some counterplay on the queen side with a6 and b5. MVL played a4, but that leaves a weakness on a4, so... Very double-edged game here. Let's move back to Mr. Magnus Carlsen on the top board. Last time we've seen that, yeah, I said. Black was in very good shape because he gets his knight to f4 and then he can prepare f5 and that's what's happening. Andrekin has brought his rook to g3, trying to defend his king side the best he can. Carlsen went f5, pawn takes d5, uh, probably temporary pawn sacrifice, trying to grab more space in the center. He's playing the four pawns attack in the middle of the board there with b5, c5, d5, e5. And how's the position? Can I go f6 here? f6, g, f6, no, it doesn't help much. Draken goes c4, but now takes on d4, claiming more space for Carlsen. Opening this a8, h1 diagonal, should you need it to put a bishop there. But for starters, he's going to reclaim the pawn with bishop f5. Knight takes e5, what's happening? I'm not sharp enough anymore to spot these tactics. Rook a6 has been played instead, activating this rook along the sixth rank, but that gives Carlsen time to keep his e-pawn alive, go e4, and I still have a feeling Carlsen should be better here. Maybe move like bishop c8 to defend his knight on f4 and attack the rook on a6. I do like his position, but it's always a bit of Carlsen bias in place here. It's normally a safe thing to say. I like Carlsen's position because he tends to do well in the end. And I believe this is not going to be an exception because now his e-pawn is running up the board, de3. We've seen him queen his d-pawn against Shigalko earlier in this tournament, his pawn on d3 in the rapid tournament that was. And this e-pawn looks pretty far advanced. I believe Carlsen's just winning here. Knight h5 is threatening rook f1 and also preparing queen e5 check if he needs it. And it's pretty very good shape because he gets his knight to f4, and then he can prepare f5, and that's what's happening. Andrekin has brought his rook to g3, trying to defend his king side the best he can. Carlsen went f5, pawn takes d5, uh, probably temporary pawn sacrifice, trying to grab more space in the center. He's playing the four pawns attack in the middle of the board there with b5, c5, d5, e5. And how's the position? Can I go f6 here? f6, g, f6, no, it doesn't help much. Draken goes c4, but now takes on d4, claiming more space for Carlsen. Opening this a8, h1 diagonal, should you need it to put a bishop there. But for starters, he's going to reclaim the pawn with bishop f5. Knight takes e5, what's happening? I'm not sharp enough anymore to spot these tactics. Rook a6 has been played instead, activating this rook along the sixth rank but that gives Carlsen time to keep his e-pawn alive, go e4, and I still have a feeling Carlsen should be better here. Maybe move like bishop c8 to defend his knight on f4 and attack the rook on a6. I do like his position, but it's always a bit of Carlsen bias in place here. It's normally a safe thing to say. I like Carlsen's position because he tends to do well in the end, and I believe this is not going to be an exception because now his e-pawn is running up the board, d much curtains. Takes, picks up the bishop on b3 just for good luck, and Andrekin resigns another convincing win by Magnus Carlsen, 
who keeps his crusade to the Triple World Championship going. Has, what does he have, seven out of eight now?